Welcome to worship. Today we're observing the sixth Sunday of Easter as we move our way rapidly through this Easter season. I hope that you find this worship meaningful and helpful and reminds you of the community that we share in the body of Christ at Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome to worship and may this day bring you grace and joy. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for water of this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi, friends. So I'm going to start with reading a version of our gospel story from our handy-dandy World Story Bible. Jesus stood to share some important news. Soon, my friends, I won't be with you any longer. The disciples froze in place. They were shocked. Please don't leave us, they exclaimed. Stay with us. Jesus assured them, I won't leave you all alone. I will ask my Father to send the Holy Spirit who will be with you forever. John moved closer to Jesus, but we love you. You love me, said Jesus, whenever you keep my commandments. But what if we forget how, asked James. Jesus smiled. Don't be afraid. My spirit will live with you and be with you. Andrew paced across the floor. Will we be able to see your spirit? No, answered Jesus. You will not be able to see my spirit. Then how will we know it's there, asked Thomas. You will know because you'll feel it. My spirit will live inside you. My spirit will help you love and care for others the way I do. The disciples whispered to each other, I can't imagine life without Jesus here with us. What if I forget about him? Jesus didn't want his disciples to worry. Remember, I love everyone and my spirit will stay and help everyone who loves me. The spirit is with us all the time. Even when we're alone and sad and scared. And that helps me remember that things are going to be okay. That the spirit is with me. Even though I can't see you guys, and I miss you guys so much. I miss everybody. Um, the Spirit reminds me that we're all together in all of this. Thanks, guys. A reading from Acts. Then Paul stood in from the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. But therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands. As though he needed anything since himself gives to all mortals life and breath in all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we, we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by art and imagination of the mortals. While God has overlooked the times of the human's ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance by all, to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. A reading from First Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear 
so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. What does that mean? I think traditionally, a lot of Christians have interpreted this to mean sort of a quid pro quo, that if we do what Jesus tells us to do, that will prove that we love him. But I rather think it's the other way around. This is what I mean. Now, for those of you who have been enjoying immense amount of family time during this period, this may seem a bit of a stretch. But I was thinking the other day about the question of why does a toddler do what the parent tells them to do? I know it's not always the case. But they usually come around, don't they? And why is that? Your young child that you're in having your mind's eye now really, really, really wants a cookie. And mom or dad says, no, because we're gonna have dinner soon. Now, there may come an age when a child will understand that connection, but often those kind of exchanges happen very early on before language is commanded in us. And so the words themselves convey the emotion of connection more than the meaning of the words. The toddler ultimately conforms to the parent's wishes because they have already learned that the parent loves them. That's the way I think about these words of Jesus that open our gospel reading today. I don't think Jesus is saying to us, you know, if you do what I tell you to do, that'll be a sign that you love me. I think rather it flows this way. He is saying, if you love me, keeping my commandments will be as natural to you as getting up in the morning and going to bed at night. If we think about where this text falls in the gospel narrative in John, it's before the crucifixion. But the disciples have spent a long period of time with Jesus. They've heard him teach and preach. They have seen him cure. They have some sense of who he is and what he is about. And I would interpret that to mean they know 
that he loves them. They know that Jesus cares about the people that he meets. And when we are loved in that way, it is almost impossible not to respond in kind. Then we get to the question, of course, what exactly are the commandments of Jesus? He said so many things over the course of his life. Are we to lift out the more declarative statements and say, these are the commandments? This is what we must do? I don't think that's a very productive exercise because what Jesus offers to us and to the world, first of all, is a relationship, a connection to him and through him, the creator of you and me and all that exists. Keeping the commandments, it seems to me, is first of all, a call to live in Christ's love. Love that will be manifested toward one another and that will be a demonstration of our love for our Lord. I don't think that's too out of line, but I do think it is a stark reminder to the way we often function. We do live in a world, in a culture, in a time where if someone does something for us, we tend to expect that they're gonna want us to do something for them sometime. And so we may be reluctant to accept. But yet, haven't we also learned during this pandemic time how, many, how much of God's grace comes to us unbidden? We find our needs being met, our fears being calmed, sometimes by strangers, often over a back fence or sitting in a driveway, calling out neighbor to neighbor, waving to strangers as they go by and feeling that warmth of human connection and helps us to get through the day, whatever it is we might be feeling at that time. And that I think is how God comes to us as well. Because keeping the commandments also means receiving God's love when it appears. And then in our receiving, we are better prepared to share it with others when it is our turn. Sometimes it takes time to get there. I remember when my wife and I were parenting our own toddlers and going through some of the stages of this is mine, this is mine, and by definition it is not yours. And more than once we delivered the parental admonition to learn to share, to be kind, only to eventually learn that there comes a time when children can receive that. And before that, they just simply have no conception. Are we so different in God's love? There is a time in our lives, a long time, Maybe it's our lifelong when we are loved and we hear God's word of grace. Perhaps it is an admonition, but we hear it. And for whatever reason, we simply can't respond to it. We continue in our own stubborn way until one day, one blessed day, we hear it anew and we understand. And keep in mind, Jesus wants us to keep his commandments so that we can enjoy the relationship with all that is holy. The text doesn't conclude with Jesus saying, now if you remember to do all these things, you'll get into heaven, or your life will be good, or you'll be rich, or you'll be famous, or any of those other things. No, what he says is, if you do these things, you'll be connected to me and I am connected to God and we will all be connected together. I think that is an especially poignant moment for us in these days of pandemic as we struggle as a world, as a country, as a state to know what to do. 
Sometimes politics and science are in conflict, giving conflicting advice, telling this is the way to live or this is the way to live. As the people of God, we make our choices. We decide which of those voices we will hear and which we will follow. But the one that we follow most of all is that of our Lord. I like the politician that I've heard a couple of times, you've probably heard him too, who says, I don't wear a mask to protect me, I wear a mask to protect you. We love God because we're already loved. The giving has already happened. The question becomes, what kind of community will we be? What kind of body will we form? Will we be a community that cares for the afflicted and the suffering? Will we be a country that keeps an eye always on the common good, not just what I want? And will we be willing to live with the confounding, conflicted, opposing positions of health and economy and admit that we don't know the answer yet, but that we are determined to make our way in love. We live and we die in God's grace. But as we live, we remember that what Jesus bequeaths to us at the end of his life is life. In another place, Jesus will say, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. May God bless you and each one of us as we attune our ears and our hearts to the love of God in our lives, as we offer obedience to that love, knowing that we have first been loved and be confident that love will sustain us and help us find our way. Amen. With the whole church, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promise of hope and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You call all people your children. We pray for those who are considered essential workers 
and who must come to work to keep their jobs regardless of risks, enabling the rest of us to live our lives in safer conditions. Grocery store clerks, truck drivers, sanitation workers, police officers, firefighters, custodial staff, meatpacking plant workers, transit workers, and so many others. Watch over them and fill us with gratitude for their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. You come to us when we are lost, and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way, especially those living with illnesses other than COVID, who are having to delay treatment and other procedures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, especially for those who are most vulnerable right now with respect to health and economic security, including the elderly, the sick, and people of color in disadvantaged communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gave us the gifts of intellect, inquiry, and curiosity. Stand alongside our researchers as they work around the clock to develop better tests, treatments, and vaccines. And instill in us and our leaders respect for our public health officials who provide advice based on the best science available. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we pray all for whom we pray into your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia. Go in peace and serve the risen Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Amen.